What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my Clawblade build for Wild Hearts, and this is the Critical Claw. Now, as you can probably guess from a name like Critical Claw, this is a build that revolves all around getting critical hits, so much so that we hit a 100% critical hit without really pulling all that much from our raw damage either. So, very, very strong build, has a lot of damage potential, and definitely a lot of fun to play because we have... Uh, basically super high damage windows on top of our normal damage windows. So either way, let's take a look at the build and jump on in. Now we are working with the Taki Minikata. This is the final boss claw blade, uh, but we're taking a rather convoluted path to get there so that we can have double turbulence fury, aerial strike fury and bust, and then lastly, some one stroke critical. So from the start, you're gonna shoot left, drop on down. From Claw of Nature Splendors 2, we, oops, dip down here to pick up aerial strike bust then we go down to pick up aerial strike fury cut across and come back up to get one stroke critical from here we shoot all the way over to the right and then drop on down just to pick up turbulence fury and then we make our way on over to the final boss to have double turbulence fury aerial strike fury bust and one stroke critical now a more budget build of this uh from here you would pick up aerial strike bust go up for crit boost fury go down pick up one stroke critical uh, from here, you'd shoot over to still get Aerial Strike Fury, and then you'd work your way down, uh, either picking up, you know, another Critical Boost Fury or Critical Master, whatever the case is, and then you'd end here, missing one of your Turbulence Furies. If you want to go for a more Break variant, of course, you could work over here, getting the Aerial Strike Bust and Aerial Strike Fury that is on here. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think we need an extra 30% of Aerial Strike Bust. That's a little bit excessive. And with this one, we are picking up Time Changer, which is going to be very beneficial for a reason we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, but taking a look over at the gear for the build, this is considered to be a full human path. Uh, we are working with the Draconic Headwear. This is going to give us access to another 30% one-stroke critical on top of what we're picking up from our weapon. With the chest, we're picking up Peril Ward, Provocation, Drawn Weapon, Boost Fury. With the gloves, Hunter's Hunger, Core Boost, and Blaze Recovery. Uh, Hunter's Hunger in particular is super nice. It's going to give us an attack boost anytime we get off a Hunter's Arm effect. And then down here, we're picking up Core Boost, Celestial Beth, and Peril Promise. And what's nice about Peril Promise is this will activate a Hunter's Arm effect anytime somebody is low. So if we're doing multiplayer and somebody gets low, we instantly get an attack boost. Uh, lastly, of course, we're going to go ahead and pick up some boots here just for Savage, Follow Through, and Verve. Just kind of nice all-around skills on the human side of things. As for the Talismans, Final Blow and Destruction Vart, down here we're going for uh, Resurrection Recovery, pick up all those people that are dying. I don't know what's going on with the textures in the back right now. Uh, and then we are loading up on One Stroke Critical, three different instances of One Stroke Critical. And so pulling this all together, 16% Turbulence Fury, 18% Aerial Strike Bust, a little bit of stamina with the core boost, some resistances, 29% on Final Blow. Uh, and the big one, of course, is going to be 96% one stroke critical so the idea is we break apart which obviously they're going to be easier to break with the aerial attacks and then for a hot minute we are just looking at 100 percent crit rate with a little bit of crit food and of course that's going to last even longer because we have time changer in effect and it allows you to really pump out a lot of damage really fast with this build so uh covering some basics for the basic car curry uh, i like running the glider glider stake crate and then lastly the um the spring uh, spring in particular i think is really nice you can get some nice gauge build on this and you can also get that with celestial thread but you're going to want to have glider because glider is going to allow us to target specifically where we want to hit with the claw and since this is a build that is all about breaking parts it's going to be very easy to target weak points and make sure we're breaking the the right right things on the monster uh, so real fast just to go through a, a couple of basics with the the claw uh, we're going to put this on biped. So on the ground, X is going to do your attacks. Y is going to be directional. And so the idea is you'd use Y to kind of get into the fight. But after that, you would just go into X attacks. Uh, now, for the most part, you don't really want to do your X attacks on the ground. Claw is meant to be played in air. So even as a base, you, know, you should be up in the air doing an aerial attack and then finishing it out with Y. So you go through your X combo and then Y will plunge on down. Now this build in particular, we always want to get our gauge full because we're, we want to take advantage of that turbulence buff. Uh, from the testing I've done at least, I tried doing uh, the crates, tried jumping off a cripple crate and jumping off a cripple 
which used a triple crate to finish filling it up uh, and I did not actually see the effect go so I think we have to actually get that blue gauge completely full before we glow for the claw attack so we're not going to really be able to take advantage of the triple crate jump uh, but anyway once the claw is in jump up in the air and then you can use right trigger to dash into the monster or b to dash to the side and you just become attack on titan now in this state uh y will do that x will do the aerial attacks but what you really want to be doing is pulling yourself in with the right trigger and then using x and using y for your finisher now to better explain that, once you're up in the air, uh, the Y attack seems like it's going to be faster, but in fact the, the Y attack for the most part, you you only want to do it when it's time to execute the finisher, and I'll, I'll show why. So once we have the, let's go ahead and hook this thing here. If I dash in with Y, you can see I'm getting 61. If I dash in with a vertical X, you can see I'm getting good damage there. Even a horizontal X, I'm hitting for 102. And so you basically always want to be using your X ability. Now for the most part, when you're dashing, you want to either use X and left or right to go to the left or right. If you use down, you're going to sit right on top of the monster. If you use up, it's going to rotate you up. But regardless of what you do, before that animation ends, you want to mash either Y or triangle to get that critical attack out. And that is going to make sure that that finisher works. And the reason I'm saying before it ends is because when I first started playing, I thought that you had to do right trigger into triangle to execute the finisher, and you don't. You can do it off of your X attack as long as you still are in that attack. So what I mean by this is when I'm doing this, you know, that kind of last hit that comes out, if I'm mashing Y before that last hit, it's still going to go out. Or if I'm doing the uh, sideways X spin, you'll notice a distinct final hit right there. If I'm mashing Y before that final hit, I'll be able to actually get the finisher off. Uh, now the finisher is going to, as long as you hit Y, when you have that forward momentum, once you have that, that, uh, that kind of red to orange glow, that is when it is going to, to go off. Uh, so you just had to have hit right trigger, and then in the middle of an attack, or whatever the case is, right now, you know, there's a distinct noise, and you can see from, even from a visual sense, you know, we had, we had a red and, red, yeah, excuse me, red and orange glow around us, and that's how you're going to look out for it. Once you see that, you know it's crit time. And you can actually attack right out of that crit, too, to continue the combo. So if we, uh, struggling to get my cage built right now. So let me go ahead and fill this up real fast and show, like, a ideal scenario. So right now we're just going into the Y attacks. But so if I go in and I mash a Y, you can see I'm transitioning to that, jump down. And then if I hit Y, as I mentioned, that dive slash is like a directional. So we did the finisher and then we immediately jumped back in. So you would finisher, jump back in, and then jump up in the air and go into your aerial combo. And the loop would continue. So it's an incredibly fast paced weapon. Uh, and with this particular setup, it's going to be one that's really, 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 really good at breaking parts. Uh, as for using our stuff, like I said, I like the, the spin on that is some good gauge build, but I also like the, the targeting capabilities of the glider. Um, but the, the claw boost, typically you could get like 70% of your meter with a three crate or with a stake. We're not going to be really using those that much here. Uh, those are more here for the utility of doing things like the chain trap and the harpoon. Uh, but either way, let's jump on in and do a hunt. I feel like it's been uh, enough. Actually, you know what? No, let's go after. Uh, where's he at? Where's 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 my where's my dude at? Where's Amatsera? I don't want to do the capital fight within that one. So that one's really really annoying. Uh, he should be like out here. There we go. Yeah, yeah, we'll go after you. I feel like this guy he bullied a lot of people, so it'll be a good one to bully. Plus, I feel like we're beyond the spoiler window, you know? At this point, you, you've either... You've gotten to these bosses, or you've seen them. Where is the bird? Oh, the bird is really close, okay. Um, yeah, let's go pick up the Hunter's Arm Effect real fast, and then we'll jump back and fight it. I'm actually gonna be um, rapid-firing these builds out to y'all, because... It is almost low long time, and while I do love Wild Hearts, um, once Wo Long's out, you know, I, I need to focus on those Souls-like builds. So uh, I'm going to be pumping out this build. I have a, a Bladed Wagasa build coming, 
and then I'll probably have the Nodachi build out, and I think we'll be on kind of like a build hiatus from this game until I've had a chance to, to get more of the more and more mobile long content out. So let's go to our friend here. Uh, hey, buddy. Jumping up in the air. Being like, that's, that's just par for course with you, though. Let me go ahead and pick up all this stuff from, from you going down. Oh, wow. Flew way too far there. Another thing that's interesting with this build is if you can do Hunter's Arm effects, uh, for whatever reason, and I don't know if this is considered a bug, but anytime you do a Hunter's Arm, it's considered a fresh part break. So, by doing a Hunter's Arm on an area that is exposed, like that part of my leg you see, that is going to activate my 100% crit. So go ahead and pull that out. You can see one strip critical has been activated. Whiff City right now. There we go. not the word right now. The bird is in fact having a very bad time. Uh, and like honestly the one the one real downside of this build, well I guess te technically two. Uh, on a joking downside, you're gonna start breaking parts so fast that you have to decide whether you want to stay attached to the monster or whether you want to loot all the parts that you've broken off, which is you know, a serious problem. Um, but on a serious note, I mean, this this build, obviously, we have a lot going into raw damage here. So it's not like we're overly reliant on crits. But as the monster does get closer to being dead, uh, and it does have less parts you can break on it, obviously, your attack power isn't going to be uh, quite as potent as it was at the start of a fight. But man, like, for, I feel like these monsters have so many different parts. Because even, like I said, even stuff like... Uh, you know, doing doing a hunter's arm, a hunter's arm is going to re-trigger that critical state. So when I consider that, I feel like it still functions fine because I can, you know, do a hunter's arm, get that that hunter's arm boost along with that crit boost, reattach myself to the monster, and go to town from there. Um, so yeah, you know, I I haven't I haven't really had any struggles with it. And probably the the big big thing I like about this is there are a lot of parts that are like really annoying to try and break in this game. And this thing, it doesn't care. It's like, oh, you need that tusk that won't come off? I got it. Uh, so you 
we should stop with that. We're not. We're not doing this. This. I don't know what you think you're doing. Gathering stuff, but yeah, no, that's, that's not how we play around here. Uh, anytime it's in a topple state, I'm just gonna go for just a regular hold down and hit X, because that's just gonna get me tons and tons of spins. Also, I'm not sure if it's just the confirmation bias, but I feel like holding down X makes me spin to win longer. I'm not 100% on that, but it feels like it does. And yes, that was that was a Amatsu. This, the thing that that whooped your ass in the Nato village for a hot minute over and over again, and you were like, "How do I how do I beat this stupid bird? Why is this bird abusing me?" Yeah, that's a sub five. Just beat the shit out of it. So yeah, Clawblade, a lot of fun. Very very uh, very high adrenaline weapon. I mean, uh, you know. I don't, I don't know what's going on lately. I have this like weird flicker on the screen. It's pissing me off though. Um, and not for nothing, you know. I don't, a lot of people like the, uh, you know, oh, it's Attack on Titan. It's Attack on Titan. Um, the the group behind this, Omega Force, the actual devs for this game, they are the ones who made the Attack on Titan one and two games on Steam, which actually aren't bad. Uh, they're they're quite fun. I think I have both of them on the channel, but. Anyway, point is they, yeah, it's Attack on Titan because quite literally they were like, hmm, what if we took Attack on Titan and put it into a hunting game? And someone was like, that's genius, let's do it. Uh, so, but either way, that is going to wrap things up for the Clawblade build. Uh, definitely a lot of fun. I think I'm going to do a fresh restart, try to figure out what the hell's going on with that flicker. Uh, but either way, up next, we are going to have a Wagasa build for y'all. So stay tuned, and I'll catch y'all with that. <laughs>